Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? Uh, glorious day. Good to see you. Um, today, I have another message for you. We're going to be talking about prayer and the importance of it. Uh, we're going to start today like we usually do in the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn book. And we're going to be in uh, song number 97 called I Need Thee Every Hour. And I'm pr- I think I'll just sing one verse. We'll just do one verse because I don't want this to go too long. So let's sing it out. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Amen, amen. We need, we need Jesus more than I think we realize. Even though we constantly remind ourselves, um, the Bible says to pray without ceasing, to pray without ceasing. And it's important that we pray. So today our opening reading is going to be from Psalms chapter 22. Um, If you have a King James Bible, you could read along. So uh, Psalms chapter 22, and we're going to only read verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season. And am I not silent? But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out thy lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Like I said, today um, I'm doing a sermon on preaching, or excuse me, on prayer. I seem to have uh, misplaced my Bible, (laughs) so I'll just have to go off my notes. Anyways, um, King David, uh, this psalm was written written by King David. He's one of the most prominent uh, characters in the Bible. Um, and the Bible says that King David was a man after God's own heart. Now, granted, he wasn't sinless. Uh, he was a great man of faith. And at several points throughout his life, he had many enemies, right? Not because he did something wrong. I mean, granted, he did do some bad things uh, throughout his life, of course. But these guys were after him just because they were after him, because he was a man of God. And, you know, Sometimes that'll happen in our life. You could do everything right. You could be a man or woman of God and the world's going to come after you. Well, the opening verse we read today was a psalm of King David, but uh, during the time he's going through a trial. And today we're going to look at another psalm. So if you have a King James Bible, you can open up to, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter 77. So uh, just flip over a few pages to chapter 77. But uh, I want to look at... um, the prayer of King David today. And I want to really slow this prayer down and, and, and focus in on, on a, key, a few key verses and take a look at this prayer. Because um, oftentimes, you know, we read the Bible and we just we just read it so fast. We just cruise through those Psalms because we're trying to read our whole Bible or whatever. And, and we don't really examine each and every word. Um, the Bible says that every word of God is pure. So we uh, we want to just take a look at um, each one of these words and not every word, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna look at this um, 
more closely and uh, see what it's saying because I think this passage is important. Um, of course, all scripture of the Bible is important. The Bible says uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness. Um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 says that. But especially today on our topic of prayer, I want to um, focus in on this on how important prayer is because no matter who you are, man, woman, child, young, old, rich, poor, whoever you are, believer, non-believer, there will come times in your life where you'll feel down. You'll feel like people are attacking you for no reason. You'll feel alone. And, you know, we might not have anybody to turn to and to talk about it. Um, uh, maybe that's you right now listening to this message. Maybe you have nobody to talk to. Maybe you feel like, hey, nobody understands what I'm going through. But I want you to remind, remind you today that Jesus understands us, right? Matthew 27, verse 46 is a famous passage in the Bible. Jesus is being crucified on the cross, right, for something he didn't do. And he cries out, Abba, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Right, it's a famous passage. Um, Jesus quoting scripture, the scripture we read in the, in the opening uh, reading. You know, in Jesus' time of suffering, his greatest suffering moment and his pain and going through the humiliation, getting the crown of thorns and people spitting on him and mocking him, he still prayed, right? He still prayed to God. He still quoted scripture. He was faithful to the bitter end, right? So there's power in prayer. Um, it brings us comfort because we know that God's listening to us. So let's take a look at Psalm 71. Did I say 77? It's chapter 71. I apologize. Like I said, I think I misplaced my Bible today. I apologize for that. But <clears throat> um, Psalms chapter 71, starting in verse 10, it should say, <laughs> For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. You know what? Let me just, let me get to my reserve Bible here. <laughs> I want to make sure I told you that right. Let's see here. I'd rather read out of the book. Uh, Psalm chapter 71. I didn't want to do this because I don't want to take up time. But yeah, Psalm chapter 71, verse 10. Yeah, this is what we're going to read. Sorry. 71 verse 10 says, For my enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. Saying, God hath forsaken him, persecute, and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Uh, look, at, look at verse 10 right here. It says, For my enemies speak against me, right? And they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. So uh, King David has his enemies coming against him, right? His enemies are speaking against him, you know. And, and what I think of is our modern technology. We have social media nowadays. We have Facebook and, and, and YouTube and all these things. And, you know, people will post their comments. They'll, they'll post up things about us and they'll speak against us. And sometimes they won't even say uh, something directly to us, right? They'll just make a post about us. And, and it's it's kind of like a passive aggressive thing to tell somebody, oh, I don't like this person, but I don't, I don't want to uh, confront them face to face or I don't want to call them out in name. But you know, you know what they're doing, right? They're still speaking against you and and that could hurt your feelings. Right. And, and that could drive people to depression, um, people making fun of them, especially like a lot of the teenage bullying going on these days, you know. But see, Jesus understands us. He understands all that. He, he understands what it's like to be an outcast and people to make fun of you. And um, so the, th the thing I want to uh, focus in on is this is a prayer, right? And King David is saying, hey, this is what's going on to me, God. So he's telling God, hey, this is what's happening in my life. That's what we need to do. We need to tell our problem to God. And you know, it's not to say that we shouldn't talk to somebody else because it always feels good to talk to somebody else who's going through your problems, who can maybe relate to what you're going through, right? Well, the thing is, is nobody can relate to what you're going through better than Jesus, right? Because Jesus went through it all, right? Um, maybe uh, you could find somebody, a friend to talk to um, who's who, who's been through what you're going through. You could talk to them. 
But like I said, nobody's better than Jesus. So he's and and here's the thing about Jesus. You know, maybe you do have a good friend to talk to, but Jesus is always there, right? He's always there to talk to. He's always available. You're never gonna call Jesus up on on the prayer cell phone and and say, Hey, Jesus, you know, I want to talk to you right now. And he's gonna say, Ah, I'm busy. Sorry. Like Jesus is always there. You know, you could always say a prayer to Jesus. But let's uh, look what else King David prayed to God. He said, verse 11, he's saying, saying, God hath forsaken him, persecute and take him, and there is none to deliver him. Just like our opening verse, you know, people are making fun of you saying, ha, God's not going to help you out of your situation. Just like they told Jesus hanging on the cross, remember? They said, oh, if you really are the son of God, why don't you come down from that cross, right? But remember what Jesus said, he quoted scripture to the devil. He said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, right? You, you don't do that. And we shouldn't tempt the Lord our God either. See, these people, and uh, the enemies of King David, they uh, they wanted to see him fail, right? They wanted to rub it in even further. Ha ha, you, you failed. See, I told you God wasn't with you. And you know, our enemies want to see us have failures in our life so they could just rub it in our face even more and mock us. And, and see, that's how the devil operates. You know, the devil allows things to happen in our life. He causes things to happen to harm us. Um, just like Jesus, you know, Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but here he's getting crucified, right? That'll happen to us in our lives. We won't do anything wrong. Um, but the devil just wants to point that finger and say, see, I told you God wasn't going to help you. See, a lot of the times devil... The devil tries to destroy our faith by doing this, right? He tries to destroy our prayer life, our relationship with God by bringing bad things into our life. But what we need to recognize is God's not against us, right? He hasn't left us. We need to keep praying. We need to keep following the commandments. Just because bad things are happening to us doesn't mean that we're a bad person. Doesn't mean that God has forsaken us, right? So... Just remember in the end, Jesus rose from the dead. Right now, he's sitting alive on his throne in heaven as the king of kings. But he had to go through that trial to get there, right? So sometimes we're going to go through a trial. We just got to pray, get through it. And in the end, God's going to make it, uh, God's going to bring justice. God's going to make it okay. But just try to imagine what King David's going through. He's going through right here is is he's going through a trial, right? He's really sad. And and uh, on one hand, he has faith in God. But on the other hand, he's unsure. Like, I don't know, man. Like, these people are attacking me. I don't know if God's going to deliver me. I don't know what's going to happen. But how does David respond? He prays. He knows the only time, the or excuse me, the only way that I'm going to get through this trial is through prayer. You know, and that's what we need to do when we feel like the world's against us. People are attacking us. They're making posts at, against us. Just pray. Tell God about it. And, and God will understand and he'll hear us. You say, well, I don't know what to say, Sean. I don't know how to pray. I've never prayed before. And you, you want me to pray without ceasing? Well, let's look at verse 12 and uh, we'll see what we'll see how David prayed here. Look at verse 12. He said, oh, God, be not far from me. Be not far from me. You ever feel like God's far away from you? You know, like life can get that way sometimes, right? Like we feel like we're all alone, right? Even God himself is not with me. God, thou hast forsaken me. You know, that's another, uh, this prayer right here, God be not far from me is another way of saying, you know, God, I need you right here, right here, right now. You know, did you know, <laughs> did you know that God can be with you here right now? As you're watching this video, God can show up. I want you to, uh, I'm going to prove this to you. We're going to turn to Matthew. Um, hold your place here in Psalms. We're going to come back to it. I guess I got a little ribbon here. Bam. Let's hold our place here. We're going to go to Math, uh, Matthew chapter 28. It's the last chapter. And while you're turning there, um, and I'm turning there, I guess, <laughs> I'm going to read from you uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. The Bible says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There am I in the midst of them. These are the words of Jesus. So Jesus says, hey, if there's two people gathered in my name, in the name of Jesus' holy name, he's right there with them. He's the third person. Um, so all you have to do is, I mean, the name of Jesus is powerful. And you know what? I don't think time stops Jesus. 
Jesus has not uh, confounded time, and I don't think he's confounded space either. I think if you're watching this video right now, you call in the name of Jesus, he's with us right now. I'm here in the name of Jesus. If you're here in the name of Jesus, he's here. Um, God bless you, Jesus. Bless this message. Uh, but let's look at Matthew 28, verses 18. It's the last verse, last verses of Matthew. Um, and this is just before Jesus ascended, ascends into heaven, and he's talking to his apostles, apostles, and he says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now this is known as the Great Commission, telling people, hey, go tell other people about me. But I want to focus in on those last words. After that comma, he's, he, or that semicolon, he says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's with us right now. The world hasn't ended yet, has it? See, he's still with us, right? Did you know that Jesus can be with you right now? Now, physically, he's not here. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, he can be with us right now. Now, that's, that's a comforting verse, right? That, how comforting is that? I want you to look again. Read it again. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, why do you think Jesus said, unto the end of the world? You guys think Jesus knew that the apostles weren't going to live to the end of the world? Of course he knew that, right? So why would he say that? He said that, I think, because he's still talking to us today. See, this is a living book. The Bible is a living, alive book. It's not a dead book. Jesus lives right now. He's, at, he's sitting on the throne in heaven. He's breathing. He's praying for you. He's rooting for you. He loves you. And until the bitter end, until the end of your life, the end of the world, whatever it takes, whatever comes first, Jesus is going to be with us. And, and before Jesus even came to this earth, King David was praying to him. He said, Lord, be with me, right? Be not far from me. What else did he pray for? Let's go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms chapter uh, 71 and we're in verse 12. He says, oh God, be not far from me. Oh my God, make haste for my help. Oh my God, OMG, OMG, King David, King David saying, oh my God, hurry up, hurry up, I need you, make haste, make haste, you know, you know that it's okay to tell God to hurry up, you know, I think of kids uh, nagging their parents, hey, are we there yet, are we there yet, uh, <laughs> like when they're driving on a road trip or something, they're constantly, constantly asking mom or dad or whoever, hey, are we there yet, and shut up, shut up, we're not, we'll tell you when we're there, right, <laughs> They're saying, hurry up, make, hurry up, mom, dad. Well, you know, this is important. Uh, King David's telling God, hey, my enemies are after me. This is important, God. I need you to hurry. I need you with me right now. You know, David's going through a trial and he feels like God's away from me. I'm all alone. And he says, God, not only do I want you to be here with me, I need you to hurry. This is urgent. This is important. And, and it's okay to pray that. You know, God will never, never put us on block. He'll never block us on Facebook. He'll never ignore our text messages. He's always going to respond to us. He may not uh, respond the way we want, but uh, he's going to respond. Uh, make no mistake about it. Um, uh, I'm going to read for you 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, the Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God hears our prayers. Not only is he not going to... Um, I mean, he, every time you pray to God, he's going to hear us. Right? 1 John 5, 14. He heareth us. The key words here are according to his will. Right? Um, it says, and this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Now, do you think God's going to, uh, um, if like, if I ask God, you know what, God, uh, <laughs> I want a million bucks. Well, you know, maybe that's not God's will. So maybe he's going to say, I, I don't even hear you, Sean. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't hear that right now. But if I say, you know what, God, um, I really, uh, I really could use a, uh, more faith, more, more faith in, in my Bible reading, you know, God's going to hear that prayer. You know what I'm saying? So 
if we ever feel like, God, we need help, we can always say, God, I need you, I need you here with me, and I need you to hurry up. Because that's God, that's according to God's will, right? Um, God's not going to uh, not hear that prayer because it's according to God's will. Uh, let's continue. Psalm 71, where are we at? Uh, make haste for my help. Verse 13, let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. So there's nothing new under the sun. You know, there were scoffers back then. There's scoffers today. People are going to um, make a mockery of, of the Bible and God and your faith in, in Jesus. But listen to this. Second Peter chapter 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after, wa- walking after their own lusts. Uh, verse 4. 2 Peter 3, 4, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. See, David knew, David knew that he couldn't change the fact that people were going to mock him, scoff at him, scoff at the Bible, scoff at his religion, scoff at him praying. But what did David do? He prayed anyway. He said, you know what? I'm not going to stop praying. You guys can scoff all you want. You can make fun of me. You can come attack me. Do whatever you have to do. I'm still going to keep my faith in God. I'm still going to pray. Okay? Let's look at verse 14. Um, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Wow. So these people are scoffing at him. They're coming after him. And he says, I'm going to still keep hoping. I'm still keep praying, still going to keep praising you even more so. You know, the more, the more you guys make fun of me, the more I'm going to pray. It's just going to drive me harder. Um, he said, look, God, you know, I feel alone. <laughs> I want you to come be with me. I want you to destroy my enemies. But if that's not your will, I'm still going to praise you. I'm going to praise you anyway. You know, that, that, that needs to be our attitude. You know, um, even though bad things are going on in our life, our enemies are coming after us, we need to just stick with prayer, stick with God, stick with our, our faith um, through the thick and thin, through ma- no matter what happens. We just need to pray. You say, why, Sean? Well, let's look at verse 15. Let's see why. It says, My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. King David didn't know how many days he has to live. We don't know how many days we have to live. We could die tomorrow. Who knows, right? Only God knows. But still he chose to be in prayer. Just like Jesus hanging on the cross. He said, I got seconds left to live. How am I going to live it? Praying. I'm going to pray to God. God, why have you forsaken me? Help. Right? Be with me. There's going to come a time in your life, maybe you're going through it now, it's going to come later, whenever, that people are going to tell you, hey, stop following the Bible. That's not helping you. That's not getting you anywhere. You know, you need to go make money. You know, you're spending too much time reading the Bible and praying. You know, That's not going to help you. But see, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what King David believed. Right, King David, when his life's on the line, he's going through the hardest trial of his life. He says, you know what I think I'm going to do with my time? You know, I only have precious moments. I could die any day now. My enemies can come after me. But you know what I'm going to do? You know what's important to me? I need to pray. How powerful is that, right? Let's look at verse 16. I think we're almost done. I will go. The uh, Bible says, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. I will make mention of thy righteousness. King David picked up his cross and said, Look, whatever happens is going to happen. But I'm still going to talk about the Lord. I'm still going to pray about the Lord. I'm not going to stop doing that. I'm not going to stop doing what God told me to do. I'm not going to stop praising Him. I will go in the strength of the Lord. I will go. He didn't say, well, I'm only going to go if things go my way. No, he said, I'm going to go. If, if it, if, <laughs> whether I die or I don't die, I'm going with the Lord. That's what we need to do. 
we need to have a stronger prayer life. Um, I know the Lord has convicted me uh, recently to uh, strengthen my prayer life. But that's my basic message for the day. You know, I wanted to take a look at King David's prayer and uh, the prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross and and remind us all that, you know, no matter what we're going through, um, because we're all going to go through something that that we need prayer. And because uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So no matter who you are, if you want to live a godly life, uh, persecution's coming your way. It's coming, and and the only way that we're going to get through that is 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 by prayer. Prayer is going to be what's going to comfort us, you know. Um, just like King David here, he's going through a heavy trial, and and he 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 turned to prayer. He turned to God for his comfort. Um, even even in the midst of death, you know, David was facing death. Hopefully, none of you guys are facing a matter of life and death. Um, God forbid that day ever comes, but if it did, you know, maybe maybe that's the case. Um, prayer is going to get you through that. You know, you, you need to take up your cross and say, "Hey, even if even if death comes, I know that you got me, God. I know that you're going to take care of me no matter what." But uh, just like King David said, there, there's no shame in praying. Hey, God, hurry up! <laughs> I need you right here, right now. Right? It's, it's okay to pray that. Um, and, and take these guys out, if, if that's your will. Please destroy them, and I'd rather not have to go to death. But if I do, I'm going with you, Lord, uh, anyways. Anyway, that um, that's basically my message to, for the day, guys. I um, don't want this to go too long, so I'm going to close there. And let's see here. Um, the closing reading is going to be in, in Luke, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, um, if you want to follow along there. But uh, until then, that's my message for the day, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's uh, let's let's uh, boost up our prayers. Huh? Let's uh, lift up the name of God. Anyway, let's bow in prayer right now. And God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Oh man, um, thank you for this message, Lord. Um, I don't know uh, what happened to my Bible. <laughs> I'll have to find that. But uh, thank you for the um, alternative Bible that you provided today, Lord. Um, Lord, I, uh, thank you for this message about prayer. Uh, thank you for hearing our prayers and not leaving us alone. Um, not ever ignoring our prayers. The devil has a way of making us feel alone and scared and, and far away from you, Lord. I, I, I just this, ask that you be with us today. Be with everybody today who hears this message. Or whenever they hear it, if they hear it in the future, be with them, Lord. Um, I ask that you hear their prayers as well as mine right here. And uh, hurry up, Lord. We need you. you know, this, there's a lot of craziness going on in this world today. We got, a, we got a pandemic. We got natural disasters. We got all kinds of things happening. Lord, just keep us all healthy and safe from all this... Um, destruction that the devil's trying to cause upon us and shake our faith lord i ask that you make our enemies feel ashamed um, for trying to mock us or make fun of us lord just give us the strength to endure the persecution and whatever trials are that come our way for your glory and your name and help us to just continue to sing praises to you continue to pray and continue to have a faithful heart father hear our prayers and um, I ask that you uh, be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, God bless you guys. As always, God's going to have the last word. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Have a good day. God bless. <clears throat> And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.